Well, hey everybody, you wanna be happy? You're looking for ways to be happier? How can you be happy? We'll give you one really easy, simple way right now. Oh. Now I've had the time of my life. What dear of a fear of this way. Oh, that seems <laughs> Well, if you're just joining us, you're hearing us yeah. sing a song from Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing. Probably the happiest movie you will ever wow. see. Really? You like it? I, you know. Does it make you happy? Uh, no. What's her name? Little Buffy, uh, tiny, oh, weepy. Oh, Gray. What's no, her? but no. what's the her? P poopy. What's her name? What's the character's name? Shafty. No, she. Yeah, she's uh, stinky. It's like one of the seven dwarfs. Lifty. Remember at the end she gets lifted up. <laughs> what is her name? D dirty, girly. Uh, it doesn't matter. Jennifer Grey, we'll go with that. <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'll remember at some point. It's the yeah. stupidest thing. Hey, what are we talking about today? Scott and Jeff, we're out here. Uh, we're talking about how to be happy. You know, there's just so many places we can go with this one. Oh, I like Which right is here. why we're here. Yeah, if you can see, this is uh, at least in the western states, western hemisphere, although I have seen Cinemarks around. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Haven't you seen? We travel yeah. a lot. We're both professional speakers. We travel all over the world uh, doing keynotes and training sessions. But uh, but I've seen uh, Cinemark in other states. Yeah. If not, it's AMC. It's Megaplexes. It's all over. Yeah. There's just all kind of movies. And what about those theaters these days? I mean, it's like you could, it's like you're laying in a uh, in a. You might as well stay room. home. I know. You yeah. Know, go ahead. Could you put yeah. that IV back in? I'm gonna watch all episodes of Lord of the Rings here. Those luxury seats. Amazing. You, you, you pay premium prices for, yeah. but I mean, they are bring the food to you. lazy boy recliners, oh, man. man. Over yeah. in Europe, I mean, you've done this when we've gone to London together, you know, and you know, after a long day of speaking to whatever group we're speaking to, you know, you go and remember they have the tables they bring right up to you. Right there. It's crazy. It's like a awesome. server. Yeah. Everything all right? Could I top off your water? Yes. That sort of thing. Are you uh, enjoying Harry Potter and the Philosopher's yes. Stone? Because that's what we call it here, not... Not Sorcerer's Stone, it's Philosopher's Stone. Did they really? Are you, yeah. The Philosopher's Stone. Philosopher's Stone. Stone. And you know, it's J.K. JK Rowling, Lady Rowling. I think she's a nitrous uh, or whatever, like Dame yeah. Judy. Oh, Dame. She, okay. Is she a Dame? She might be a Dame uh, by she now. Might be a she's, like the richi <laughs> she's like the richest British woman like ever uh, yeah. next to the Queen or yeah. something. It's crazy. But when she first wrote it, it was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Oh. And then to Americanize it, I believe, they called it the Sorcerer's Stone, which makes no sense. But a philosopher doesn't sound quite as wizardy yeah, to yeah. Yank. So if you're British watching this, maybe you know more about it than we do. But the point is, is that if you want to be happy, little things like getting out to a movie yeah. or not getting out, watching a movie at home. Yeah. Uh, it's fun. I looked up for our entertainment. You looked, and up, the, you looked up the uh, English version of Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, which is actually Star Wars, The Phantom Dillweed. <laughs> so. That doesn't even <laughs> compute. Yes, that's British. Here's some happy movies according to people on the Internet. Ooh. And, and you can leave sure. your comments of the movies that yeah. make you the most happy. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll run some by you. Tell me okay. if, why they would be happy. Forrest Gump. Hate it. <laughs> be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, come on. I barely even got the words out of my mouth. <laughs> no, I like that movie. That's a fun movie. And, you know, and I've read the critics as well. Oh, uh, this old thing, everything coming together in one lifetime couldn't happen. It's a puzzle. Come on, break the fourth wall for crying out loud, right? I mean, yeah. just go with it. But, Suspend yeah, your disbelief. Great movie. Uh, you know, because it's a great movie because it's all about optimism and, and, and it's tackling life's challenges and making mud out of mud cakes or out of lemons out of lemonade. Sure. Le no, I'm, I'm going in reverse. Chocolates. Life is like a bug. You know, the whole idea that, you know, life, you know, you're handed a lot of different things and you just make the best of it that you can and you triumph. And yes, it's fictionalized and based on absolutely nothing true, but any movie like that. It inspires you. Yeah, you know. Inspires you. Here's another one for you. Uh, I lost my place because I've been moving around too much. Here it is right here. Here it comes. Despicable Me. Did you like that? Yeah. My daughter loved it. Animation. I, I love animation. I love Steve Carell. The little, the little minions are just, they, I don't know what it was about them, but they, wow, they just went like wildfire. And they're, and the, the, the beauty of a movie like Despicable Me that I, I, I love and that's inspiring is that it kind of shows that anybody can change. 
you know, that you, you know, even the hardest heart or the worst person has this opportunity to redeem him or herself. And then the little family of, 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 of midget uh, icons. Little yellow. Midget emojis. Gummy bears, yeah, I guess midget's probably not the right word to say anymore. Not. But people. I'm not talking about, well, it's an animated character. The word midget still exists in our lexicon. Yeah. We just can't say it. I'm sorry if you're a little person and I yeah. use the word midget. I think Peugeot came out with a midget car. No, that was Fiat. The, the Fiat midget. The Fiat MG, or MG. Yeah. MG, well, whatever. MG. Uh, next one, Sound of Music. Oh. We, you know, we showed that to to our daughter when she was five, and she loved it. As, as five, young as five years old, and it's just so. I good. fell in love with Julie Andrews when yeah. I was that age. She was yeah. just so cute. Oh, what about uh, and perky? What, about, what was her? What was the older? The oldest daughter, Grandpa? Liesel. Liesel. Gretel. <laughs> They were from Austria. You know? How do you solve a problem? No, she what was hers. She was, uh, I am 16 going on 23. Even though my name is Grickel. <laughs> I'm a gorgeous girl, but my name is Liesel. Well, Liesel, and Liesel was a cute name. Uh, but that's a happy movie. Oh, and then what was the little girl? What was the little name? Was it the one that was so cute. And you know, I don't remember her name. Ah, well. But they all had English accents yeah. for being Austrian. Yeah. What are you going to do? That's, you know, that's, the, that's the language of Europe. Sing Street. Have you seen Sing Street? No. I added this one. Sing Street. Have you seen it? I've seen Sing. Nate, have you seen it? No? The animated version. No, Sing Street, Street is one of the most inspiring, especially for someone who kind of was a teenager in the 80s. You Sing need Street. to see Sing Street. It's a period piece from the 1980s, huh. but made in 2015, 2016. It is mind-blowingly good. And, and give it a few minutes because they're Irish. The oh. Irish kids and this Irish cast, and it'll take you a second for your ear to sort of tune in to the Irish, because it's very strong, you know. But uh, I'm Billy telling Madison you, Billy strong, that's strong. Or yeah, not yeah. Billy, Billy, Billy Elliot. Elliot. Yeah, yeah, it's it's strong. But man, is it! And you'll love the soundtrack. This is one I added. Yeah. I don't know if you agree with, but Groundhog Day. Oh yeah. It's Bill Murray. Yeah. How how does he not make you happy? Yeah. Fire up any almost any Bill Murray movie. Except maybe some of his more recent ones. What about Bob? What about the, Bob? The Groundhog, Groundhog Day. Day. The cool thing about Groundhog Day, it's also got a Redemption. very deep message yeah. to it. Yeah. You think about it. I mean, you never know how long he's lived that day. It could be a thousand years he's lived yeah. that day over and over again. Because, you know, by the time he becomes a master concert pianist, and you're just like... Wow. Isn't it cool how he decides to, to take the time that he's been given and actually do something. And that's what made him happy, was he was working, he was striving, he was doing things. And he enjoyed himself as well. Yeah, it took but a that's while, a, but he got into it. Yeah, but that's a, that's a great movie to yeah. uplift you. Okay, Love it. so to wrap things up here, we're gonna talk about our top three celebrities that we've met. Not our movies. No. Catch on that one. Because we've, we've met a lot of celebrities. Yeah. And uh, you know, you gotta be careful how you approach a celebrity, and how to treat a celebrity, how to talk to a celebrity. Yeah. But uh, I've met so many, I can't even remember them all just from working as a film actor and TV actor and stuff, but also just in passing I've met some. Mm -hmm. So let's hear your, your third. So uh, third for me, uh, this is really going to go back to you children of the 80s, is Howard Jones. Oh, you remember that? yes, we met him in London. Yeah, we were doing a trade show together. We were both up on stage doing the, sky, the script one. and all of a sudden Scott says, hey, everybody, Howard Jones. Howard Jones, one of the coolest. Nobody reacted. Talented, I know, guys Didn't, in the 80s. Because this was 20 years later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, that was that was my, that was a cool He thing. was so nice, and he yeah. said, boy, I love Utah audiences. Every time I come to Utah, yeah, I pack yeah. the place. It's true, Utah audience. We're in Utah, by the way. They love Howard Jones. If you yeah. remember him, look him up. Uh, number three for me, Mike Lookinland slash Chris <laughs> Barnes. Uh, Mike Lookinland played, played Bobby Brady on The Brady Bunch, and Chris Barnes played Tanner Boyle on The Bad News Bears. I was a young kid about their age when those shows came out, and I was a young actor and so jealous of them for the roles that they had, but I just thought they were amazing. When I met both of them in person through working with them, uh, it was just a, it was a cool little you know, full circle moment of little Scotty meets little Bobby and little Tanner. Kind of fun. Number two for you. Number two for me is Stephen uh, King, the author. Oh, wow. I met him in a, an elevator in Washington, D.C., and I didn't know it until we were about halfway up to my floor, you know, and he's cracking jokes, you know, a little bit. And I look at him. He's the goofiest and, looking and I, guy. <laughs> yeah, I get out of the thing and I, I turn around and I look at him almost as the door's closing. I said, Stephen King, right? And he says, yes. 
Boom. I said, yeah, nice to meet you. Have a good night. Boom. And I just oh, I called my wife instantly. It was just cool. It was really was it, a, was it a hotel in the Northeast, like up somewhere? In no, Vermont? luckily it was like a big major Marriott hotel. So it wasn't like one of these, you know. Wasn't The Shining. The Shining that would have been awesome. Colorado, I know. Yeah. That would have, yeah. Staying with Stephen have King. Sleep, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sleep tight. Red rum, red it's rum. Steven time, you know. Uh, anyway. Number two for me is uh, the cast of Modern Family, oh, uh, yeah. but specifically Ty Burrell and Julie Bowen, who play Phil and Claire. They're the main parents there. I did an episode of uh, Modern Family. I think it was in season seven. And uh, it just had a few hours to basically just sit and chat and talk to them. Ty actually has a house here in Utah, and uh, Julie doesn't, but she also has boys. She has three boys. I have five boys. We talked for a long time. She's a big crossword puzzle fan. I've always been a big okay. crossword puzzle fan. And she was doing the New York Times crossword and she and I said, oh, I love that, I do that every day. And she pulled out of her purse a photocopy of it and said, well, here. She said, I always carry one around in case anybody else wants to do it. And uh, just a lot of fun. Number one for you. Jay Leno. Nice. Now, not when I Now, we both him. met him. That's right, that's the moment I'm thinking of. Yes. So, again, we're out doing a trade show together, doing our speaking stuff, and we go out on uh, right in front of Caesar's Palace, right out on the strip, we're trying to figure out what we want to do, and here comes Leno with his jaywalking seven or eight yeah. entourage people. Well, let's go talk to these guys, and he comes right up to us, microphone boom, uh, it's all there. So, what are you guys doing here in Vegas? You know, and, and we and we just felt like idiots. We, it, it was one of those moments where you just can't think of anything fun and funny well. To say and here we are, here we are, a couple of Mormons in Vegas at a trade show. We've just come out of Caesar's Palace. We're not drunk. We haven't, don't have money to see the big shows. Nah. We're not with the ladies. Nah. We're basically dressed like a couple of yeah. tourists like this. And he's like, yeah, look at these. What are you guys doing? Are you high? Are you drunk? What are you? No, we're Mormons. No, we're Mormons. We, we, we were just in the arcade <laughs> playing video games. Yeah. It was not our shining. I wonder if it made it on The Tonight Show. It should have. I hope it, was, it did. It was funny. Yeah, we don't know. Number, number, one. number one for me was Christopher Lloyd. Did a show uh, called Granite Flats which was on uh, Netflix for a number of years and a uh, really fun television series. And Christopher Lloyd was kind of our big name, you know, recurring guest star. And uh, he was just a, a great meet for me. But all those things, of course, make us happy. But get up, get out, enjoy yourself, see a movie now and then, uh, you know, kind of escape from reality. A drive-in is a great place to do that as well. Yeah. And there's still a few of them you left in America. Them, yeah. Summertime is a good time to be at a drive-in unless you live in a warmer climate, but a great chance to take yeah. the kids. And if you can't go to a drive-in, just take your phone and put it on the dashboard. You can do that as well. <laughs> you know. Which, but don't do it while you're driving. No. See you next time. So what do you think? Did uh, that little list of happy movies make you happy? If not, comment. What is your happiest movie we want to go to, right? The go-to movie for you. Like us, subscribe, share, tell your friends. We'll see you next episode. Keep smiling. <laughs>